Your Excellency, Ms. Gunilla Karsum, Minister of International Development, Cooperation of Sweden. Excellency, Dr. Mohammed Eldin Saad, Minister of Water Irrigation of Egypt and President of the African Ministries Council on Water. Your Excellency, Mayor of uh, Stockholm. Your Excellencies from Stockholm International Water Institute and the World World Water Week, distinguished speakers and guests, ladies and gentlemen. It's an honor for me to address the open section of the World Water Week. I want to congratulate the international water community for embracing the food security debate. Water and food security. It is a simple relationship there is no food security without water security. Clean water is necessary to produce safe food adequate for consumption. It is necessary for a healthy life. The List Millennium Development Goals report brings the good news that the drinking water target has been met. This is a reason, a reason for celebration, but cannot make us forget that about 11% of the world population continues to be without access to an improved source of drinking water. Improving the sanitation also remains a challenge. There has been a significant increase, but 15% of the population remains without access to them. Ladies and gentlemen, water is also crucial for agriculture. The State of Land and Water Research for Food and Agriculture report released last year by FAO warned that water scarcity and pollution are becoming a risk to key food production system around the world. And more and more, there is a dispute between human consumption and other uses of water. Agriculture, as we practice it today, uses more than 7% of fresh reserve water in the world. It takes about 15,000 liters of water to produce a kilogram of meter, 1,500 liters to produce a kilogram of cereal. And as has been said, more than 100 for a uh, hamburger. This number shows that agriculture is a thirsty activity. But it also means that agriculture holds the key to sustainable water use. So better water efficiency, we can also call it crop per drop, requires new forms of water management, not only in agriculture. Ladies and gentlemen, I also like to remind you of some human face behind this abstract concept of agriculture. Throughout the world, about 2.6 billion small-scale producers to the land raise animals and fish. They are the main providers of food in the developing world. If we want them to produce more sustainable, preserving natural resources, adapting to and contributing to the mitigation of climate change, we need, we need to help them. We cannot expect them to do all of this alone. At the same time, of course, we need to ensure that the agribusiness sector adopts best practice. The private sector must have the social environmental responsibility to develop cleaner and more efficient production process. Many of them, as we heard, are already moving in that direction. Better land and water management in general and greater support to small scale production in particular require action at local, nation, 
and international levels. It is important to note that water issues are not issues of individual countries. Factors related to access to food, land, or shared water research, such as rivers, lakes, and aquifers, are becoming more frequent in many conflicts all around the world. This is a situation that is bound to increase in the future and brings important implication for regional and global stability that can only be tackled by improving water governance. By 2025, two thirds of the world's population could be living in water stress areas. And I do believe that we will be wrong in those provisions. Ladies and gentlemen, 50 years ago, we had the challenge of increasing production to feed the world. The Green Revolution helped us overcome the challenge, but at a huge environment cost. The collateral damage of the intensive use of natural research and chemical inputs was land and water degradation. It clearly shows the limits of our current agriculture dominant paradigm. Today, we have different challenges, challenges related to access to food and natural research and for more sustainability. The questions we need to ask ourselves is not whether we can feed the world. We already produce enough food for all, despite we have near 900 million of nourished people and that we will need to improve production by 60% till 2050 to food the expected 9 billion people. At the Rio Plus 20 conference on sustainable development, the international community gave a clear message. We need to ensure that tomorrow's agriculture delivers its service in a more sustainable, efficient, and equitable way. We need to produce more with less. We need to be more sustainable, mitigating and adapting to climate change. And we need to make innovation and better practices available to the poor farmers. We already have those technologies that allow us to save resources and raise yields, which are more efficient in the use of water and which help to preserve soils and the biodiversity. The challenge is to adopt them on a much larger scale and bring them available to the poorest farmers. Ladies and gentlemen, let's not forget that while we have enough food, as I mentioned, around 900 million people still suffer from hunger. And an even large number is overweight or obese. Every year, around one third of total food production does not reach the consumers. It is either lost because of inadequate storage and transportation facilities, more frequently in poor and developing countries, or it's thrown away at the consumer end in developed countries. Industrialized countries waste per year almost the same as the entire net food production in sub-Saharan Africa, according to the study commissioned by FAO to the Swedish Institute for Food and Biotechnology. This is important because when we speak of sustainability, we need to address not only production, but also the consumer side. So to meet the world's growing demand for food, we need to produce in a way that conserves water, uses it more sustainable, and helps agriculture adapt to climate change. But we also need to change the way we eat, reducing food waste and promote healthy diets. So my message here today is a plea for a more inclusive way of addressing the world's challenge. 
a way to look for solutions that acknowledge the complexity of the world in which we live and the interrelation between today's major concern related to food, water, and climate change. Ladies and gentlemen, sustainable, efficient, and equitable management of water resource is more than just a nice idea. It is a fundamental pillar of any food security strategy. There will be no solution to the problem of food security without addressing water issues. And there will be no solution to today's water problems without addressing those of food production. I trust that discussion that will take place this week will contribute to this objective. And I encourage all of us to think boldly and bravely. This way, we will take another important step toward the sustainability, and we all committed to the Rio Plus 20 conference conclusion. Thank you very much.